Hi there. So throughout this course, we're gonna move to the other level. We're gonna concentrate on SharePoint SPFX extensions, not web part. So are you ready for that? Yeah. So all we need to do is launch your command prompt. And from there, you need to navigate to your new folder. That one gonna be dedicated for SPFX extensions. Here is it. I created a new folder with this name and I'm gonna hit enter to go to this one. After that, we need to write human command to create a new project. So here is it and hit enter. After that, what's your solution name? I'm going to name it application customizer and hit enter. Which baseline package do you want to target for your component? I'm going to go with SharePoint online only and hit enter. Use the current folder. Yeah. To place the files. Perfect. After that, do you want to allow the tenant admin the choice of being able to deploy the solution to all the site immediately without running any feature deployment? No. After that, will the component in this solution require permission to access Web API? I'm going to choose no. And which type of client side component to create? As we discussed, we're going to focus this time on extensions. So everything is as it is like we did in our previous sessions but this time the only difference gonna be on this part we're gonna focus this time on extension and hit enter after that you're gonna got three options the first one which type of client side extension to create application customizer or field customizer or list view command set i named my project as application customizer because i'm gonna focus on application customizer i'm gonna hit enter after that what's your application customizer name we need to hear as well to provide a name as well a description so here just give it a very brief name like demo one after that and that description this demo gonna focus on application customizer and hit enter it's gonna take a couple of minutes till gonna create all the dependency and required files for this extensions and as we can see it has been completed successfully so the next step it just write code space dot and hit enter After that, let's navigate to the source folder where we can find the extension folder are over there. And inside that one, we're going to find demo one application customizer dot TypeScript. And if we open this file, we can find very simple file that going to have different import. For example, here import override from Microsoft Decorator as well import log from Microsoft SP core library. And here is that if you scroll down, you can find the interface with the name iDemo Application Customizer Properties. And that one got only one property called the test message of type string. And if you scroll down, you can find a class with the name of your extension. Here is it. And that one going to extend base application customizer. But let's have a look about JSON file over there. Here, if we open this one, we're going to find a difference between this and the web part. Definitely, here is a component type going to be extension, not web part, as you can see over there. Not only that, if I open this IOC and open the ENUS, you can find here this message that I'm going to return. going to call the demo one application customizer because here you're going to see this test message. But let's have a look about the official documentation from Microsoft. They have a definition for extension. That one going to extend the SharePoint user experience, including a notification area, toolbar, and list data view. Not only that, what about application customizer? Application customizer is mainly dedicated to add a script to the page and access well-known HTML element placeholder and even though extend them with custom rendering. So let's get back to our visual code and have a look about this. So here, if I come back here again to this main file and let's go step by step about it. Inside this class called the demo one application customizer, we can find override. And inside this on initialization of this class, 
you're gonna find log which we imported from Microsoft SP core library here is it we imported log so this log have many log type could be log.warning log.error or even log.information just like to gonna print a message but what kind of message the first parameter here gonna be log source that's basically a string so where exactly this string has been defined if i scroll up i can find it over there here is it it's just a string with this name log source you can give it any name and this string just have this value dim one application customizer which it's your extension name you can as well change it it's up to you so that's basically gonna be the first parameter here inside log dot information and the first parameter gonna be string after that the second parameter here it just gonna print another message with starting initialized and gonna get this title value from another file gonna just to show you how to retrieve this so this title if i would like to go and check its value it's already inside a file called mystring.ts if we open this one here we can find an interface just to have only one property called it title and that one of type string but if you want to know the value of this title you need to go to englishus.js file and from there we can find here is it just like key and value is the key here it's called the title and here is it the value demo one application customizer you can as well change this value it's up to you so by coming back here it just here we got two parameter those two parameter are gonna print those two values after retrieving those two values here we are defining a message and this message is gonna be of type string this dot property dot test message we already know that test message has been defined here but where is its value we can go to the configuration folder and from there you're gonna go to server.json and from there we can find test message as a key and here is it the value of this one so from there only you can find the value of this test message here if there is no any message we're gonna print out no property were provided and the last part here dialog.alert hello from string the title we already know about this and just like new line new line and the message itself and after all of this just return so right now i think you got a full understanding about the default code for extension right now we're gonna do very simple modification on this i will go to server.json which inside configuration folder and from there we need to put here our tenant id .com. so here instead of contoso i need to replace it by my tenant id so here is it i'm gonna navigate to google chrome and from here my tenant id dot but let's add here a new page over there and this one i'm gonna choose it from plank after that let's create this page for spfx extension after that publish this page after that i'm gonna copy the address of this page and let's navigate back again to visual code and we need to replace this url with our url as well for this and that so we need to do it two times here you can find my tenant id dot and some sites backslash and by end of this you're gonna find the url for this new page we just created together after that control s to save this file and just we're gonna do two steps that one gonna be gulp build and hit enter after this one has been completed successfully we need to run the last step here gulp space serve and hit enter and here is it it's up and running we need to navigate back again to our google chrome 
and close this one and let's do one more refresh for this one and here is it after doing one more refresh we can find this message allow debug script warning this page contain unsafe script yeah we know because it is mainly an extension and that one gonna inject some script to your sharepoint page so we're gonna choose here load debug script after loading this page we can find this message which we just discussed together a few moments ago hello from the name of my extension demo one application customizer and that one test message in some cases if this one didn't go show up with you it's very simple you can go to your command prompt from this one after you run this gulp serve you can find here this the url that have the query string which is gonna load for you this script so you can take this one as a copy from here and right click to take it as a copy and from here just paste it and hit enter it's gonna show up with you so you can find this one after that directly click on load debug script that's it thank you for watching and in the upcoming sessions we're gonna dive more inside spfx thank you